We hope you enjoy listening to this weekly podcast from Lifeline Church. Find out more by visiting lifelinechurch.co.uk. I want to talk about light, being children of light. The Bible says we are the light of the world. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. Remember, we use that particularly at that Christmas time. It inspired us then. And uh, we want to unpack that a little bit more. For sure, uh, this is this is a dark time. I mean, everybody that I speak to, not that we're kind of down in the dumps, but, you know, the lockdown during winter seems to be a lot gloomier than, than at least when we had the decent weather. And the third time and, and the numbers that have been so high on the infection rate, I mean, the effect on the economy, the effect on education. I mean, it is, frankly, it, it is a dark time. And I can understand um, people uh, feeling, uh, you know, it's a, things are a bit gloomy. Um, and, uh, and yet, it's interesting, isn't it? God speaks to us about light and about being light. And that's what I want us to look at, uh, because I sense that there's there's something that God's got for us. Now, I'm delighted that we, we've got this time, this opportunity that Sally just mentioned this evening, and we'll pray also at the end of the meeting. But uh, I, I believe um, that this is a time where we could actually rise up and shine brighter individually, as well as anything God may give us collectively. So let's have a look at it. What is, let's think, of, first of all, what is light and what does it do? Well, light is often synonymous with God himself. I mean, in the creation, he said, let there be light and there was light. It's interesting, isn't it, that often the interventions of God are um, accompanied with, with light. Um, Paul on the road uh, to Damascus. First of all, there was a great light. Peter in prison before he was delivered from prison. The Bible says about a bright light. And again, people, God says this, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Now, we understand that uh, in, a, in a spiritual sense, in the reality of the fact that we, we, we live from a different source to what um, we had before we knew Christ. We are also the light of the earth. I mean, this is what God says. Now, what does light do? Light attracts. Light reveals. It shows the way. No, no wonder God is light, because it's about showing the way, his way, the way, the truth, and the life. It, light dispels darkness. Uh, it's an amazing thing. No matter how dark the darkness is, it cannot extinguish light. You know, we've talked about if you, you go into a completely pitch black room and you've got a little torch and you just switch it on, the darkness, no matter how, how dense it is, cannot put out that light. And I think that God wants us to grasp again. No matter the darkness, he's put a light in us and he's given us light in order that we can be those who actually overcome the darkness. In fact, the Bible tells us in, in Philippians 2.15 that he set us as shining stars or lights in this world. So we've got to ask, so how is that to happen? What, what's that to be? What's it to look like? For sure, dark places need light. I mean, I don't know if you're like me, but... Um, you know, I've sometimes thought, well, uh, if only if only I could take over the whole thing, you know, and I joke about it, but I wouldn't want that task at the moment. Don't you at times feel sorry for those who are in government and responsible? Uh, it's a, it's a it's a difficult time. Um, it's it's dark places need light. And sometimes these things go beyond what man can do. So it reveals, it it brings things into the open. Uh, it gives understanding. I'm not just talking about physical light. 
but you know we do have that expression um in in this country when the penny drops when we suddenly see something this is one of the things we're talking about when there's a revelation and we see something the men of Issachar uh, understood they understood the times and the seasons and knew what to do the brothers and sisters I believe this is what God has called us to be but let's see how it starts the base from which it comes and then we can see some of the opportunities let's just think I was thinking about examples. When Anne Smith was was doing her PhD, something stirred in her. It was about society. Now, of course, all the time we hear now about the problems of isolation. And that didn't used to be the case. And so in the course of time, she developed creative English, but she developed it with a a belonging sense, a societal sense. That's light, and that's bringing light. And we trust and believe that as God shows us and gives us these things, that he may grant us opportunity to further shine the light. Now, we're getting opportunities uh, in, in the different areas. You take this week. Um, Daniel was telling me in serving in this uh, faith action, that one of the meetings this week had four government ministers joining in the small group meeting. It's an, it's opportunities, and we need to know how God will grant us. Nathan was telling me uh, in the opportunities he's had he, recently with the mayor, the mayor of London's office, and with the leaders of of police and security in this area. We have a message. We have a message uh, that we can bring. We don't have the answer to everything, but as we shine as lights, we're looking to see what God can bring to us. He is light, 1 John 1 verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there's no darkness at all. Revelation 22, 5. There will be no more night. We will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. There's something so connected with God in terms of light. And that's why we as children of the light want to want to embrace everything that he has for us. When Jesus spoke again, this is John 8, spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life you know i'm talking partly about bringing light into situations but the greatest light is the light of life that we see things that we know things because we know him uh, and we know about him it, it, it brings a transformation and no darkness can put that light out it says if Christ is light and he is in us, he will shine through us. That's what I believe. We're looking for the light to shine through us. Do you remember, uh, I forget where he told it, but Terry King told a story about getting, in one of the teachings that he did, I think, uh, about getting in an elevator and just turning to somebody and saying, uh, what button can I push for you? Well, that's not an abnormal sort of statement, but somehow... That the light of God in him, in that one action, showed through, which meant that he ended up in a, a long, involved and conversation with that man to share the goodness of God. What good news? Good news into the current darkness that you, my brothers and sisters, are the light of the world in this particular area, in wherever God sends us. You are the light of the world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 tells us this. Let your light shine out of the darkness. It is in the plan of God that we shouldn't be hidden. But it's not about us. It's about who is in us shining out. Ephesians 5. For once you were, for you were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord, 
live as children of light. Man, what a commission. What an opportunity. What an anointing. You are all children of light, the children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. What does that mean? How has that worked out? We became children of light when he put his light upon us. We therefore live accordingly. We are empowered to live differently as children of the light. And therefore have the ability to abstain from things which would block the light. Those issues, those temptations, those attitudes. So that the light, it's not so much just in what we do. It's not so much just in what we say. It's the fact that what God has made us to be as we remain in him and under him. As we abstain from the things that block the light and actively embrace those things which lead to light. So let's think of it a little bit. By how we love, how does our light shine? By, of course, how we love and the good that we do. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. Let your people see, let the people see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's an interesting thing. That's why I think at all times, but particularly now, <clears throat> We need the leading of the Holy Spirit. That little act of kindness. That little act of serving. That contact. You know, it's very difficult. And it's nigh on impossible to do what God has given us to do. Biblical friendship, supernatural relationship. And we can't even meet other than a walk around the park or something like that with one other person. But the Holy Spirit is not limited to that. The Holy Spirit, if we're going to be light, like he said, will grant to us a nudge, an opportunity, a step to take. Now, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but somebody helps us with shopping. And you know what? They sneak into the shopping. Of course, Dawn would give them a list. But they just drop something in like they know it's for me. I think, what is that? But it's just a token of, of showing something. God does that all the time. And he wants to use us to do that. I mean... We had snow a few days ago. In the morning, I looked out. I said, I called Dawn. I said, Dawn, there's somebody sweeping the pavement outside our house. Well, it could have easily been our neighbours. We have wonderful neighbours, uh, Muslim neighbours who we, we love and long for them to see the light. So I can't quite see the person's heads down shortly after dawn was going out and it, and it was one of the brothers and, and could just come jumped in his car come round and thought thought oh let, let's just clear the snow outside their house well we say it's not a big deal i tell you it is a big deal because it's little things that god nudges that carries his light carries his life it expresses something of his love and it's very key. It's, it's very important. So we have this opportunity. Let your light so shine. That people see your good deeds. And glorify your father in heaven. Jeremy spoke to us recently. About making the Holy Spirit comfortable. Don't resist. Don't quench those uh, nudges. Uh, that he gives. Follow his lead. Choose to do what he gives us to do. How we love actually lets light shine. This is interesting, isn't it, when the Bible says in 1 John, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Isn't it interesting? 
this is not about joining some organization as we walk in the light as he is in the light there's a special joining that takes place it's a very significant thing it's the joining of god so that we demonstrate what he's like as we are enabled as we walk in the light walking in the light enables us to have fellowship one with another walking in the light is living in obedience to god by the power of god it's attributed to aristides the athenian who was sent to investigate uh, what what were, what were these christians up to and he said his report back was well it's just amazing but the thing that stood out was behold how they love one another do you know that's a phrase that's gone down through the ages it should always express behold how they love one another you know, love expressed in service and action. I, I'm sure I've told you before, but back in the time I was stockbroken, I was meeting with a client that was a very, um, uh, a very strong atheist and uh, very hard nosed sort of character, and wasn't interested in anything, any things that I would try and talk to him about um, as we had lunch together. Until he happened to mention he was moving, and I think I'd moved recently, moved house. And uh, he said, well, did you get a good removal from No, I said, actually, my friends. He stopped. He said, what? Yeah, I said, yes, my friends came and they, they helped us and got a van and did it. Wow. It opened up the conversation in a totally different way because he could somehow relate to an act of love a light shining through behold how they love one another anyone who loves this is 1 john 2 10 anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble you see because if we're close and we love and we have love for each other we're close enough to catch somebody before they make a mistake i was talking some while ago to one of the brothers in the network and they were talking about um uh, planting in in a new area and they also talked about some struggles in their in their relationship with their wife i was able to say to him forget about planting in a new area the first thing you need to do is, is to to get things uh, sorted and right this would be the last thing to do to go off somewhere else and sometime afterwards and many times since he's expressed great gratitude because of the transformation see because there was a closeness of relationship a love in that instance i was able to see no this would not be the right thing and catch him before he stumbled Because we walk in the light, <coughs> we can help one another. And the good work that we do actually shows like acts of kindness, thoughtfulness, care, refusing, gossip, not judging. It shows light, something different in this world. The world finds it attractive. But then Luke 8, 16 says, you are the light. Don't, don't hide it. Don't put it under a bowl. If we're not convinced of the value of it, there's a danger we won't shine it. We've got to make sure we don't allow darkness in. But failing to seize an opportunity, uh, putting it under a bowl, it does contrary. You remember we were hearing recently um, the story of Sally is, was glorified by being who he has made her to be, not by doing so. It's not because we're there is because we action and do the things that God has given us to do. So we look for the leading of the light. What do you do? I mean, how many times have I heard the phrase, not necessarily from amongst us, but from around us, there isn't light at the end of the tunnel. I'm sure most of you could identify when you just can't see the way through and the way out. 
So we turn to the word of God again. What does it say? His word is a lamp unto my feet. You know, when you can't see a distant landmark, when you can't set your trajectory based on that, and you can't, can't even set autopilot, but God will give me the next step each day that I live by his grace. His word, I can't see a light at the end of the tunnel, but I can see the next step because his, his word is a lamp unto my feet. The beam draws, beam of light draws our attention. Why are you causing me to think of this person, God? Why is this need or why is this opportunity just popped into my mind? Let me just read you from Luke. Uh, 11 33 from the passion no one would think of lighting a lamp and then hiding it in the basement where no one would benefit a lamp belongs on the lampstand where all who enter may see its light the eyes of your spirit allow revelation i.e light to enter into your being when your heart is open the light floods in when your heart is hard and closed the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place you see, we are supposed to see everything else from the context of his life. C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. The recognition that it changes how we see things. Allowing a change of filter so now we're able to see everything else by his light seeing things differently I love that scripture in Psalm 73 the psalmist is talking about oh the, the unrighteous do so much better and, and it's so tough and, and they've got all these things and we're you know it's not good for us then he gets further down in his psalm and he said when I tried to understand all this I, I it was troublesome in my sight I like the authorised version that says, and my, my feet have well nigh slipped, my steps have not been taken, until I entered, and this is what he goes on to say, the sanctuary, God's sanctuary, then I deserved and saw it as it really was. When we come into the presence of God, when we come into his light, we see things as they really are. We must come into his presence in order to see things how they really are, rather than our default default sort of warped perceptions that this world will push upon us so where are we we'll talk more about this next week but god wants to transform us god wants us to live and be in his light i guess you like me in this time of, of difficulty of darkness you'd be ready to say god i want more I want to come more into your light. I want to move more under the direction of your Holy Spirit. I want more in my relationship with you. I'm moving more in the light, used by your Spirit, with sightedness that is Holy Spirit directed. We're going to just respond to God in a moment with a song, and Stephen's going to lead us. Very simple, very well known. Uh, and then at the end, there will be opportunity to come in for prayer. Prayer more of your spirit, Lord, more of your light. Seize that opportunity. And again, seize the opportunity later on today as we give opportunity to wait on him. So let's join together. Um, and let's just use that song as a, as a response. You know, if turn your eyes upon Jesus doesn't work, I, it works for me because I can sing it to myself. If it's easier to say, sing, turn my eyes upon Jesus, you do that. So let's just join together as Stephen leads us. Turn my eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And then the things of earth 
grow strong as we do in the light of his glory and grace. podcast by Lifeline Church. We hope this message has been an encouragement to you. We are a relational church with a passion to demonstrate God's love to one another and our surrounding community in real and practical ways. We believe that God has called us to have an impact on our families, our communities and our nation. We'd love to connect further with you, so please do visit our website at lifelinechurch.co.uk, on Facebook lifeline.church.uk or Twitter at lifelineuk. Thank you.